Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a fun perfume tag. I've been tagged by Carmen Centrix, who created the Confessions of a Perfume Collector tag. And I'm going to tag a few other people just to keep this going. So I'm going to tag Luke Parfums, I'm going to tag John from Scented Snowdrops, and also Lizzie from Rose and Jones. And if you haven't seen me before, I'm Claire Smith. I make videos all about perfume, perfume science, perfume history, perfume psychology. And I also just do some straight perfume reviews. And I also love doing these fun kind of perfume tags as well. So if you are interested and you haven't done already, then please do consider subscribing. And also please like this video if you do enjoy this kind of content. So what's the first question? So question number one is, which is your cheapest fragrance? Well, I can answer this in many different ways, but I'm going to answer this question in how much did I actually pay for the fragrance? So my cheapest is this one. This is a Jo Malone fragrance and it's called Pomegranate Noir. And there was an offer on Instagram back in September where Jo Malone was offering free bottles of their fragrances. So you could choose between three Jo Malone fragrances and I chose Pomegranate Noir and there was no delivery fee. It was entirely free and I just couldn't believe my eyes at this offer. And it was something that you could send on to people through email. So I sent it on to another person as well. And they also got a free bottle of Pomegranate Noir. It was just an insane kind of offer. And I, I really would look out for those kinds of offers from Jo Malone in future because if they've done it once, they might do it again. So yeah, that was my cheapest. It was It was free. So question two is, which is the most expensive fragrance in your collection? Again, and you could answer this in many different ways, but I'm going to answer it in which is the fragrance that has the highest retail value in my collection. And that one is Jasmine des Anges by Christian Dior. So this fragrance, I think in the 250ml bottle size, which this one is, retails for £345, which I think is ridiculous. But yeah, clearly Christian Dior can, can charge that much money for it. I didn't pay that, I paid about £40. And you can pick these up secondhand, not easily, but you can find them much cheaper than retail secondhand. So that's my most expensive retail. So question three is how many full size bottles do you have in your fragrance collection? And by full size, we mean anything that's one ounce or 30 mil or above. So I think overall I have 132 bottles of fragrance in my collection. That includes a load of perfume oils as well. And I've also just filmed a declutter video. So some of those are marked to leave my collection. But I think overall out of those 132, I do have a lot of very small size fragrances as well. So actually when I take those into account, I only have 108 full size bottles. I think really ideally I would like to get smaller bottles of fragrance in future and I would also like to reduce my numbers overall really. Question four, have you ever received a weird comment on your fragrance? So I think probably everybody's received a bit of a weird comment on one of their fragrances. I think the one that stands out for me is actually one from a very long time ago and I remember I was wearing the Body Shop's vanilla perfume oil, which really dates this comment because that I think is something that's now that's now gone. You don't, you can't get that vanilla perfume oil, but that was something that I really really loved. And I remember coming back from lunch at work, and I was in the lab, and someone turned around and went, "Who's had custard for lunch?" And yeah, I guess you know it does smell exactly like custard, so they were bang on. Um, but yeah, it was me and my vanilla perfume oil. I think, you know, you always get those kinds of comments, don't you, where people say things like, what's that? And you don't know whether that's positive or whether that's negative. But I think in YouTube world, people in their heads compute that sometimes as you've got a compliment on a fragrance. And that's not a compliment on a fragrance. That's somebody saying, what the hell is that, isn't it? I've had people say that about things like um, Halfetti and also Portrait of a Lady kind of clone dupe fragrances. I think those fragrances are just very strong and they're very distinctive and people don't know what they are because they've never smelt those kinds of fragrances before or a lot of people haven't smelt those kinds of fragrances before. So I think you just do get really odd comments on fragrances. So um, yeah, I've had some weird ones. So question five is, do you ever wear fragrance for cuddling time? And if so, which one? Right, so this question made me cringe slightly because I'm not someone who plans my cuddling time I think it just happens doesn't it don't, don't you just sort of you know get in the mood and then go for it I don't know I think it's quite rare for somebody to be really attracted to your fragrance and I think it's something that perhaps only happens in the first sort of throes of 
of going out with someone and meeting someone. I don't think it's something that's going to be a big part of a long term relationship unless you're both really into fragrance. I think it's also something that is it's going to be a choice of a fragrance that is probably quite gentle and it's going to be something that you're probably not going to spray like you would normally spray a fragrance to try to get other people to smell. I think as well, if you're looking for that cuddling time, you probably don't want to spray it somewhere where somebody's mouth might go. So you might not want them to be able to taste the fragrance because I think that would be quite off-putting. So I think you'd probably have lots of things to consider there. I think really a fragrance that's quite musky and quite skin-like would probably work quite well for that kind of activity, perhaps. But yeah, I mean, I don't really consciously think about it, really. Um, yeah, I think I've been detailed enough in that answer. I'm, I'm moving on and, and, and yeah, hiding my British shame. So question six is how many times do you spray your fragrances? Well, I think it depends on the fragrance, doesn't it? If you've got something super strong like Kenzo Jungle, L'Elephant or Chanel Coco, you're not going to spray those fragrances more than three or four times because it might be unpleasant for other people around you and it might be overwhelming for you. So I think it depends if it's a light one, then I might spray it six, seven, eight times. And also I might refresh it at lunchtime. I might take the fragrance with me and I might refresh it when I get home from work as well. So I can end up spraying quite a lot in, in one day. If it's something that's quite light or something that fades, I might spray it maybe 15, 16 times by the end of the day. And that means that I can really end up using a lot of certain fragrances that if they just don't last or if they're light, then I seem to go through them quite quickly. Question seven is where do you spray your fragrances? How do you wear your fragrances? Well, I think I'm a bit lazy and I tend to put my fragrance on when I'm already dressed. And that means I tend to concentrate around my neck. So I'll spray sort of here, here, round the back, um, sometimes I spray underneath my hair, um, just actually on my hair, and I also spray uh, around my chest as well. I think, you know, there are lots of things said, aren't there, about spraying your chest and your neck. And, you know, I think as long as you're careful in the sun, I think it's absolutely fine. I don't think there's going to be any kind of issues with, with excessive wrinkling in those areas. I think you should be wearing some protection in those areas anyway. I think really, um, if I want something to project better, then I will spray my wrists. I'll, if, if it's a summer, I'll spray the backs of my knees. I'll also spray my outer layer of, layer of clothing if it's the winter, because, you know, nobody's going to smell a fragrance that you've sprayed three, three clothing layers deep, are they? You've got to spray it on the outside of you as well for somebody to be able to sense it. So, yeah, it depends on weather conditions. It depends on my mood and how bothered I am and whether I want other people to smell it or whether it's just for me. So question eight is, do you buy perfume backups? And I would say in general, no, I don't. I'm not someone who tends to want to buy another bottle when I've been through a bottle of fragrance. It's really, really rare. But in those cases where I do really love a fragrance and they've discontinued a certain formulation or perhaps they've discontinued the whole fragrance, very occasionally I will buy a backup and one that I bought was a backup of Alien and this is the vintage formulation. I've checked this, I've opened it, it's all genuine, thank God. And this fragrance is something that I had been looking for for ages and I just know that it's going to get rarer and rarer to find this original formulation so I was really pleased to find this one. And then another backup that I have is one that was sent to me by a really lovely subscriber here on YouTube, uh, Fatima. She sent me her 100ml bottle of Orchid Soleil, which is a fragrance that I've been looking for a backup of. And I hadn't managed to find one at a reasonable price and in what I thought might be good condition. So, yeah, I'm really pleased to have this one and really grateful to Fatima to send, for sending me this because it's just so rare now. And it will only get rarer. So time is running out for me, really. But yeah, I'd say in general, I'm not a backup buyer. And I try not to hoard fragrances because I just have so many that I have to really love something to want to have multiple bottles of it. Question nine is, do you show your fragrance collection to your friends and family? No, no, I don't. I, I've tried, honestly. It's not for want of trying. My family just have absolutely zero interest in fragrance. My mum will wear Reeve Gauche. She'll perhaps wear Chanel Number no. 5. But that's really where perfume ends for her. I mean, she's 85 now. So she, I, I think, you know, she's got other things to think about really than, than fragrance. 
my dad, um, he's subscribed to my perfume channel after much deliberation. He's, he's a farmer, so he generally watches tractor videos quite a lot. I don't think he's really into perfume YouTube. I think he just subscribed and then watched one video and has never watched me since. Um, but yeah, he's got no interest in fragrance. Actually, perfume makes him cough. So the, there's, there's zero interest there for him. I think my friends, people at work know that I that I do this and I do take them samples and I also take them full bottles to try sometimes. And actually, I get a really good reaction from that. People are really interested. They've helped me out with a couple of videos. And there is one person at work who is quite interested in fragrance, but she's definitely someone who has uh a collection that's kind of stopped in time it's something that's maybe i don't know pre 2010 ish i would say her collection's at and that's you know that's no reflection on her that's just you you find something you love and you, you stick with it don't you but also she has a lot of very old fragrances that you know are, are, are partially used basically and she's not buying more because very sensibly she's still got some so you know, why would you go out and try other fragrances if you've already got old fragrances? To most people, that's normal. So I think, you know, there are people out there, but no one's really that interested. And I would love to find, you know, somebody with a perfume interest to talk, talk about my fragrance collection with. I think that would be absolutely amazing. But yeah, nobody's really that interested. So I've, I've never shown anybody my perfume collection, really, other than people on YouTube. Question 10 is, does your partner know how much you spend on fragrance? Well, does he watch my YouTube channel? Because, you know, you all know how much I spend on fragrance every year because I put it in videos each year. I've done it in 2021, 2022 and 2023. I'm, I'm quite open about my spending in general in life. I'm, I'm not someone who's precious about, you know, telling people how much stuff costs because I think that can really help people to understand their own finances, to see examples of other people's finances. And I'm not embarrassed by the amount of money I spend on fragrance. I think £10 a week is, is really reasonable. I don't think that's a lot of money at all for someone who's got a YouTube channel talking about fragrance. But I think from my own point of view, I'm a financially independent person. I have a full time job. I've always been someone who pays my half of everything. I don't think it's anybody else's concern, really. If I'm not harming my financial future by buying fragrance then there's there's no issue is there i can i can spend what i like on it to a certain degree as long as you know i'm not not making myself uncomfortable financially there's there's no no problem question 11 is do you plan on collecting more or do you see yourself stopping in the near future i think i have a problem with calling my collection a collection sometimes because to me fragrance is something you you use fragrance is something you you enjoy you wear it runs out and you decide whether or not you want to buy more. I think for me, I don't want to have bottles and bottles of fragrances sitting on shelves that I don't use. I really find it very difficult when I see larger channels with collections of every single fragrance from a, from a house. I, I just think you can't possibly like all those different fragrances. And OK, you've maybe got some of those fragrances in PR or maybe all of those fragrances in PR. But that tells me nothing about that person's taste in, in perfume if they own every single fragrance from one particular brand. That's just not a realistic thing to show people. That's not how normal people would consume fragrance. I think really, no, I, I, I want a fragrance collection that turns over. I want to see some changes in my fragrance collection. I don't want something standing still. Given that I've got 132 bottles at the moment, I want my fragrance collection numbers to go down this year. I want something that's going to head back more towards 100 bottles. And that's why I did a recent declutter video, because I think if something doesn't appeal to me, if it's something that I'm not using, if it's something I'm not reaching for or getting excited about reaching for, there's no point in me hanging on to it just from a numbers point of view. I have limited space and I don't really want to the accumulating stuff really i think really from a youtube point of view there's there's no no future sort of that i can envisage where i will quit in the short term i do have sort of things going on in my life with with work that mean that sometimes it can be really difficult to film videos and it can be difficult to find the time to plan and to edit videos so you know i may i may miss the occasional week but i don't, i can't see me quitting youtube or anything like that in the at least in the short term so 
no i think i will continue collecting is if that's the term we're going to use but trying and buying fragrances yes i'm going to continue doing that so question 12 is where do you see your fragrance collection going in 20 years time i think in 20 years time things will look very different in the world and i think really perfumery will be very different in 20 years time too i think ad the advent of ai is going to entirely change the world of perfumery i think it's probably changing it already i think there'll probably be a lot of very generic fragrances coming out of designer perfume houses even more so than there have been already in this last year or so and i think really the time of having multiple perfumers working on a, one fragrance is something that is going to be mainly in name only i think a computer aided design of fragrances is going to be at the forefront of perfumery in the future that kind of artisanal single perfumer kind of development of fragrances is going to continue more in the smaller brands so things like indie maybe some niche brands might continue that on but i think with designer and larger niche i think that's kind of dead i think for my own collection i would want something with fewer fragrances i would like a very curated collection a very small perfume wardrobe and i'm sure you know my perfume collection will look entirely different in 20 years time because different fragrances become discontinued and new fragrances come into the market don't they so yeah um please let me know what you think fragrance collecting will look like in 20 years time because i'd be really interested to know your views so that's the final question in this video i hope you've enjoyed it if you have enjoyed it then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already and let me know what you would answer to some of these these questions in this video i've really enjoyed doing this tag thank you so much to carmen for tagging me and for creating the tag in the first place so i'll see you in the next one bye